You're watching KNBC 9 First News. All right, kids, this morning summer break is officially over for some of you and several school districts in Kansas welcoming back students. We're live in KCK with some changes that students and parents can expect in the Turner School District. And you have a lot of sunshine, typical summer heat for kids heading back to the bus stop this morning. But we do have impacts on the way for students returning to school next week. Another dip in surging prices. I'm Amy Liu in Washington with what we're expecting from the latest inflation report coming up. Six o'clock right now on your Wednesday morning. Thank you so much for waking up with us on some of your first days of school. I'm Matt Evans and I'm Jamie Weiss. Nick Bender has your first alert forecast and what a first day for some kiddos heading back in Kansas. Yeah, it's mild this morning and this afternoon. We'll have a lot of sunshine with high temperatures in the upper 80s. The UV index will be very high today, so if your kids have recess or after school activities and the teachers encourage you to either pack the sunscreen or put it on them, today would be a day to do that. So we're going to have a lot of sun. It's just a beautiful view there with the river and downtown. Mm, Got to love it. It's 80, 84, 64 degrees north wind at three miles an hour. Relative humidity is around 90%. You might be able to feel that humidity this afternoon with the sunshine. 66 downtown Overland Park, 68 KCK over to Piper and Shawnee. It's 68 degrees, 61 degrees in Tonganoxie. So a lot of sunshine at the bus stop this morning. Mild conditions, comfortable 64. 3 o'clock this afternoon after school activities. It's just sunglasses, sunscreen. 87 degrees for a high. We'll have highs around 90 degrees in Lawrence and Ottawa, 89 degrees in Atchison, 88 in Trenton, Chillicothe, mid 80s there into central Missouri. It does get a lot hotter as we head into the weekend, Jamie. Okay, appreciate the heads up. Thanks, Nick. We are following some breaking news from St. Louis this morning. The Missouri State Highway Patrol has issued a statewide Amber Alert for two year old Amari Washington. She was found alone in a brown or dark purple 2012 Hyundai Sonata when it was stolen. The car has Missouri plates CT9D6C as well as a hole in the left rear tail light. It's not clear where the car is headed, but if you see anything, you're asked to call police. It's the first day of school for students across the Kansas side of the metro. Today, all students return to Midland Adventist Academy in Shawnee. Sixth and ninth graders return to the Piper School District, and Sun students are headed back to class in the Turner District as well. That district has a message for parents and students as the fall semester now gets underway. And we're turning in to KBC 9's Martin Augustine. He's joining us live near Junction Elementary this morning. And Martin, what's top of mind this morning? Well, a couple of things. First off, the school district wants to remind everybody that it's going to be a quick day for Students Day here at Turner and a staggered start for those students, depending upon what grade your child may be in here at Junction Elementary or any of the other schools across the district. So the way this breaks down is that students in grades 1 through 7 and 9th grade return today for an early dismissal day, with the Journey School of Choice also returning today for a full day. Tomorrow, kindergarten students through 6th grade return for an early dismissal day. It'll be a full day for grades 7 through 12. Friday's a full day for pre-K through 12th grade and no school on Friday for the Journey School of Choice. Here's the other thing the school district wants to remind you about is that the meals program has provided meals for free for all students over the last couple of years. That program has come to an end. So if you believe you qualify for free or reduced meals, you need to apply for that online on the district website or at the district office. I have a link to all that back to school information plus a lot more that uh, Turner has put together up now school. on my Twitter feed. Reporting live, Martin Augustine, KBC 9 News. Overland Park is looking for more crossing guards before kids head back to school. All City Management Services is hosting a hiring event at their office on Neiman Road from 9 to noon this morning. Crossing guards only have to work 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes after in the afternoon. Pay is $30 a day. If you do plan to come to the hiring event, make sure you bring two forms of ID. You can always count on KBC 9 First News as more students head back to school. We're going to have live reports every morning as more schools open up. Plus, we're going to bring you information on any changes to our local school districts like new security measures and altered bus routes. You can look for all that information on air and online at KMBC.com. 6.03 now on your Wednesday morning, the FBI is reviewing evidence found at former President Trump's home at Mar-a-Lago during a raid on Monday. After that news broke, supporters lined the streets outside of his Palm Beach resort, and sources are telling ABC News that agents were there for 15 boxes of documents that Trump brought to Mar-a-Lago after he left the White House more than a year ago. But some national security experts believe that investigation is likely broader in scope. I would be surprised if at the end of the day, we learn this was simply an effort by the FBI to retrieve records. There probably is something much more significant there. 
Neither former President Trump or any of his family members were at Mar-a-Lago during that search. He did post a statement calling it an attack by radical left Democrats who don't want him to run for president in 2024. The Department of Justice began looking into Trump's handling of records after the National Archives made a request. Kansas City, Missouri police are looking for a shooter after two men were shot yesterday. The first victim was found around 3 Tuesday afternoon near 80th and Garfield. The second victim was found a few blocks away at 80th and Michigan. He's in the hospital with critical injuries. Police now say they were both shot after a fight near Garfield. The shooter ran off. And we have new details from Missouri State Troopers after Sunday night's deadly shooting involving Kansas City, Missouri police. Troopers say the man shot by police was 31 year old Zachary Garrard. Troopers say police officers saw a stolen car at a gas station at 55th and Prospect and tried to talk to him. Garrard tried to drive off, grazing an officer. Police then opened fire. Garrard died at the hospital. The man arrested in Lawrence on suspicion of killing four people in Ohio will be in court today for a preliminary hearing. Stephen Marlowe facing aggravated murder charges. Officers say he shot an older couple and a mother and daughter near Dayton on Friday and then fled the state. He was put on the FBI's most wanted list and Lawrence police found him on Saturday night. Marlowe is in the Douglas County Jail right now, but authorities in Ohio are working to extradite him right now. The Lee Summit Parks and Rec Department is now apologizing after a weekend birthday party at a city water park was canceled. And the family says this is a case of racial profiling. The city released this video from Saturday showing a crowd outside after the party was canceled. Chris Evans paid for his 17 year old to host a party there Saturday before they were turned away with a refund who denied a group of black teenagers entry to the Summit Waves water park for no apparent reason other than the color of their skin. The city now says they canceled the party due to concerns about crowd size and safety. They say the family advertised the party on social media, which goes against the contract they had signed. A city review also revealed that Summit Waves water park staff used inappropriate and insensitive language, including in a lifeguard social media post. The Evans family says they're considering legal action. To our south, people in Branson, Missouri are cleaning up tree limb and other debris after strong storms this week. Heavy rain and wind tore trees apart and knocked down utility poles too. Crews say it'll take several days to clean up all that mess. One woman says she was outside watching the storm when it started, but went inside once that hail started coming down and branches fell. It started hailing. We've got videos of all the hail and, and everything big, like, you know, bigger than a pea sized hail, but huge hail. And it, that lasted quite a while. There are no reports of any injuries from that storm. State of Missouri is now allowing SNAP benefit recipients to get help replacing food lost during recent flooding in St. Louis County. Recipients have until August 24th to report that loss to the Family Support Division of the Department of Social Services. If approved, that family will get replacement food stamps. The state is also offering child care assistance to people who lost their homes in that historic flooding that we not only saw in St. Louis, but also in Kentucky, Nick. Yeah, it wasn't just like the, the roads and the interstates. You saw that it was, it was in neighborhoods, yeah, it was everywhere. in people's homes, yeah. in their apartments. That's why they lost their food. You know, it just wasn't, you know, some streams and some creeks coming out of their banks. Yeah. It was significant. We're dry now. We still need the rain. So the rain is still beneficial for some of us, especially on the Missouri side, but we don't have any rain in the forecast today through the weekend. This is going to be one of the last big weekends before a lot of students return to school next week, and it's a sunny, hot, dry weekend. You see the heat index value starts to outpace the temperature by a good bit beginning on Friday. That means it's not only becoming hotter, but it's going to start feeling more humid. Heat index value 94 on Friday, close to 100 on Saturday, low 100s on Sunday. Sunday's high will be above 95 degrees, and we might even see that excessive heat spilling over into Monday. And we have a lot more students heading back to school next week. Johnny, there's even the potential of rain and even thunderstorms a couple of days next week. All right, Nick, thanks so much. As we take a look at your first alert traffic, 608 now, and nothing going on big on the highways to worry about as far as any major delays. pair of semi-trailer trucks here won the on-ramp from uh, Lee Summit Road to eastbound I-70 and then one on the off-ramp uh, to westbound I-70. So uh, from Lee Summit, or I should say westbound from I-72, Lee Summit Road, as they swing the camera around. One way, or the, oh, and there's another one. So we have three semis all together, uh, none of them causing a problem, though. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Johnny. Economists are predicting the first dip in inflation in months when today's consumer price index is released. Amy Lewis on our Washington Bureau, and Amy, this has been top of mind for the president. 
Well, Jamie, while we do expect today's report to show prices falling, they're still the highest in decades. And my colleague Kaylin Norwood asked the White House press secretary how the administration plans on helping struggling families with the White House now pointing to its work on lowering gas prices. One of the things that we have been talking about and working on with the gas prices coming down the last 56 days matters. It gives Americans a little bit more of breathing room. So the president laid down uh, what his inflation plan is, is. He knows there's still more work to do. Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre also noted that Inflation Reduction Act and the CHIPS bill, both policies she said will help ease inflation and supply chain issues. Falling gas prices may also be a hopeful sign and a main driver behind today's report. But economists predict inflation in July jumped 8.7 percent from a year earlier, which is slightly down from June. At the same time, hiring, wages, rents and health care costs are all still up and show that inflation may not drop anytime soon. Some of those, namely hiring and wages, indicates the economy remains strong and that we are not yet in a recession. In Washington, I'm Amy Liu, KNBC 9 News. We're, inspected, we're expecting that inflation report around 7.30 this morning. We'll, of course, let you know what that says. Time right now is 6.10, and a year after Gabby Petito's body was found, her family is filing a new lawsuit. Yeah, the FBI found a written confession from Gabby's fiancé, Brian Laundry, but the, her family is now suing a police department over her death. Here, why they say those officers share some responsibility. This morning, a doctor is out on bail after she was arrested on suspicion of poisoning her husband. Next on First News, the symptoms her husband says made him realize something was seriously wrong. No rain chances this week, but as we look ahead to next week, there is the potential of a couple of rainy days. The rain's beneficial, not if it falls during the bus stop. The timing coming up. Our first alert 12-hour day planner so you can prepare for what's next. KNBC 9 First News, leading the way.
Welcome back 614 right now on your Wednesday morning live look outside in downtown Kansas City. A beautiful sunrise as a lot of students are returning to the classroom this morning. The first day of back to school in our area and it's smooth sailing right now. But Nick Bender has our forecast when excessive heat and even rain will return in a few minutes. But first news chopper nights Johnny Rollins taking a look at our morning drive Johnny. Hey, Matt, wide open so far. Thanks so much. As we take a look at your first alert traffic, 614, and we are looking good here. I-35, the Overland Parkway merged to the right as traffic goes away from us. Overland Parkway, northbound I-35 to 75th Street, really all the way into downtown, looking good. So, too, southbound headed towards us where the Overland Parkway peels off to the right there and heads on down to 435 College Boulevard. Uh, everything looking good here and around the rest of the town so far as well. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. Johnny, thank you. It's been almost a year since Gabby Petito's body was found in a national park in Utah after a week's long search, and now her family is suing the local police department, saying that they failed her. Her family is seeking $50 million in damages from the Moab City Police Department for negligence and wrongful actions they say contributed to Gabby's death. Right before she went missing, Moab police responded to a domestic dispute between Gabby and her fiance, Brian Laundrie, but just suggested that they separate for the night and did not file charges. The officers failed to recognize the serious danger that she was in and failed to investigate fully and properly. Brian Laundrie's body was discovered in a Florida nature reserve weeks after Gabby was found. The FBI says Laundrie confessed to killing Gabby in a notebook found with his things. Gabby's family is also suing his parents, claiming that they knew Brian killed Gabby and helped him hide from police. A California doctor has been arrested and accused of poisoning her husband with drain cleaner. Take a look at this. Jack Chen's lawyer say this video shows his wife, Yu Yu, pouring Drano into his lemonade. He says he secretly set up the cameras after being sick for months. It started with a chemical taste in his mouth. Then he was diagnosed with stomach ulcers, gastritis, and inflammation in his esophagus. And it went in to get checked by a doctor and found out that he had had some physical effects and started to then connect the dots. Chen has filed a restraining order against Yu, saying she's verbally, physically, and emotionally abusive. Since she's bailed out of jail, no charges have been filed. Happening today, the Missouri Public Service Commission is holding its last public hearing on a proposed rate hike from Evergy. Evergy says those new rates would increase monthly costs for about $8.46 for Missouri Metro customers, $10.66 for Missouri West customers. Today's meeting is virtual, starts at noon. You can watch it online at psc.mo.gov. Singing superstar Jennifer Hudson was in town on Tuesday to spend time with some Kansas City kids. And you may have seen her throughout the first pitch at one of the Royals games yesterday. Hudson's first stop of the day, though, was the Urban Youth Academy. She did some exercises with the kids there and gave them new sports equipment, plus tickets to the Royals game. Mayor Quentin Lucas named Tuesday Jennifer Hudson Day in Casey Mo. We want today to be a special day in Kansas City forever. And we're recognizing the work that Jennifer Hudson has done for boys and girls, not just in Kansas City, but all around the country. So how about we create a new holiday, and it's going to be called Jennifer Hudson Day. One of the youngest performers to earn an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. She's a goat, basically. Hudson says she hopes she could be an inspiration for young people to achieve their dreams. And hey, if you haven't heard, the Jennifer Hudson Show is making its debut September 12th right here on KMBC. She says the hour-long series will tell the story of everyday heroes. You can see it every day at 2 o'clock on KMBC 9, followed by the Kelly Clarkson Show, then KMBC 9 News at 4 o'clock. This week is your last chance to get money off of traffic fines in Olathe by donating school supplies. $15 worth of donations will get you $50 taken off your parking or traffic ticket. You do need to bring in a receipt to prove you bought the supplies. The court hopes to give out 2,200 backpacks filled with those supplies to kids in the Olathe district. Court representatives say backpacks, number two pencils, markers, three ring binders, and spiral notebooks, some of the most needed items right now. They are accepting donations through Friday. In Belton, a heated competition between firefighters and police to gather school supplies is now over. Both sides put up a good fight, but it was the fire department that came out on top, bringing in more than 12,000 items. The police department brought in 3,500 items, so altogether, that's more than 15,000 school supplies gained for local students. 
Both sides have signed a peace treaty, a signal to end all the pranks and the name calling in this competition. I think you had a good point, Matt. They shouldn't end the competition. Right. They keep it going. Keep it's it friendly. Going. It's, right. it's almost Well, I mean, there will always be competition between police and fire, no matter what happens. Always, yeah. always. Well, here's something we got to get to. We are just three days away from the Kansas City Chiefs first preseason game. Yeah, they'll be taking on the Bears in Chicago this coming Saturday. Kickoff is at noon at Soldier Field. This will be our first opportunity to check out the rookies in game action for some of these guys. Making the team means stepping up on special teams. Special teams coach Dave Taub talks about what he looks for during these games. Willingness to block. I mean, you know, there's a, there's a lot of uh, offensive players that aren't necessarily they want to stick their head in there and you know, I'm talking about the wide receivers who want to get in there and, and do the tough, dirty work. Same thing goes with DB. So we've got to find out about those guys. I mean, that's, you know, you can't really resemble that. You can't get that in these, these practices. Here's a look at what's coming up for the Chiefs. They are off today. Then they'll have one last practice at training camp before heading to the Windy City on Saturday. No training camp Sunday. Chiefs return to practice Monday through Thursday, which will be the last day of training camp up in St. Joe. Sign of the times. We get we get back to school. We get Chiefs preseason. I know Jamie's ready for fall. Yeah, I'm ready for fall. I think everybody's ready for fall, like temperatures, right? I'm Nick? just ready for what's next, and what's yeah. next is not fall. Boo. It's, well, it's, it's still it's, August. It's excessive heat. So <laughs> that's the other thing we have yeah. to remember. It's August. August is like can be right. just blast furnace hot, and a lot of the times it is. And we're going to see that again this weekend. City View Camp this morning. What a beautiful view. You just look all those trees. Eventually it will be fall soon and we're going to have that fall foliage. But for my summer lovers, uh, we've got another weekend in store for you. 64 degrees right now. Comfortable. A north wind is light. It's only three miles an hour. It's 55 in St. Joe. There's kind of fall like weather. 55 in Atchison, 59 degrees in Warrensburg, mid 60s here across the Metro KCK Piper down to Olathe in the mid 60s. Our 12 hour forecast for today in Kansas City, just abundant sunshine, 87 degrees for a high today. We'll probably see some 90s more than likely for some of our Kansas communities. Ottawa, Baldwin City, Lawrence up to Tonganoxie, maybe even Atchison, mid to upper 80s, Cameron, Chillicothe, Marshall and Sedalia. More 90s on the map for tomorrow as we just kind of continue our march back up into the 90s. 90 in Liberty, Leavenworth, Olathe, 87 in Warrensburg, 88 in Sedalia, maybe 90 degrees there in Warsaw, Cole Camp down toward Truman Lake, Lake of the Ozarks. Be a great weekend for the lakes and a great weekend to get out there to the pools if they still have the uh, the ability to do that. If they're still open, if you go to those public pools, it's going to get not only hotter, but more humid. We'll have heat index values that march all the way up into the hundreds on Sunday, and that may spill over into Monday on our first alert nine day forecast. We have a lot more kids going back to school next week. They may have to deal with that excessive heat for after school practices on Monday, and there is the chance of rain and thunderstorms Tuesday and Wednesday. That rain would be beneficial, Matt, just not if it you know, falls in the morning or in the evening for after school activities. All right, Nick, thank you. It is almost time to celebrate Kansas City. 816 Day is coming up on Tuesday. Next on First News, we have a preview of some of the free fun happening across the city next week to market.
Welcome back. We've got new details on a baby boom in a labor and delivery unit at St. Luke's in Lee's Summit. Five of 14 nurses have had their babies. This is a video from last month while we talked with the nurses. The team say because their due dates are spread out, covering shifts during maternity leave should still be pretty manageable. And congratulations to all of them. We are now just six days away from 816 Day. There will be different events all across Kansas City, Missouri next Tuesday, including outdoor performances in the city market, an aerial artist, a saxophonist, and trained vocalists will all be performing starting at 5:30, and it's all free. There are also plenty of other events like concerts and food and retail specials all across Kansas City on Tuesday. You can see a full list right now at do816.com. Casa of Johnson and Wyandotte counties are holding a t-shirt design contest. The groups will pick one original design to be sold online and during events. The design should represent Casa's mission of advocating for kids in the foster care system. The winner will receive a $100 gift card and the t-shirt they design is going to be handed out across the metro. The deadline to submit your design is August 25th. Just go to Casa's website. That's casajwc.org slash t-shirt. It is the first day of school back for hundreds of kids in Kansas. Next on First News, we'll let you know who is going back and the changes in store for one district. And as we take a look across the metro, a beautiful sunrise over downtown Kansas City. A nice day today, but the heat and rain could come later on. Nick's going to tell you when. the way you're watching KNBC 9 First News. It's the first day of school in the Turner School District. I'm Martin Augustine. We'll break down which students go back when and what parents need to keep in mind about those school lunches. There's lots of schools that have called this year and always has been since we started it. 
The Independent School District is discussing the possibility of moving to a four day school week. It benefits one Missouri superintendent says he's seen after 12 years with a shortened week. This morning, we're learning more about an FBI search warrant executed at former President Trump's home in Florida. We have a timeline of the raid as the Justice Department continues to stay quiet. It is 631 on your Wednesday morning. Good morning and thanks for joining us on First News. I'm Jamie Weiss. And I'm Matt Evans along with First Alert meteorologist Nick Bender. And Nick, a lot of parent eyeballs are tuned into you for today, tomorrow, the next day. We got a lot and of the kids next day and the next day going and the back next day. to school. <laughs> yeah. It's an easy one today. It's going to be Good. sunny. It's going to be sunny tomorrow. It's going to start getting hotter. I do think the weather's going to have an impact on the bus stop and after school activities next week. It could be Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. But for today, for this morning, my friends, it's a comfortable morning and a beautiful view of downtown Kansas City. 64 degrees. See the Missouri River there in the background. Be a good weekend to get out there to the lake. 87 degrees this afternoon with a lot of sunshine. We'll have a light northeast breeze for today. Clear and mild for this evening. We'll drop down into the 70s just after sunset. Shawnee, KCK, Overland Park, 67 degrees. Good morning in Tonganoxie at 59 and Liberty. 66 at Independence and 65 in Lee Summit. For kids going back to school today, comfortable at the bus stop sunshine. You need sunglasses, maybe even the sunscreen. You know, if your kids have a recess or they got after school activities, you have a very high UV index for today, so sunscreen might be something you want to consider packing with them or putting on them. 90 for a high in Lawrence and Ottawa near 90 in Liberty and Olathe and it'll get even hotter for tomorrow and then we have excessive heat and humidity on the way for the weekend and rain and thunderstorm chances for next week. There's a lot more going on this weekend and next week Johnny in the weather. All right, Nick, we'll be watching. Thanks so much. As we take a look at your first alert traffic, it is 632 and good looking run from the Northland. The first light of day. It looks like the sun just now coming up. Southbound I-35-29 past uh, Levy Road here and on over to actually, yeah, this could be Levy Road. Almost thought it was 16th Avenue. Anyway, coming up to the Bond Bridge now. Southbound, no problems into the northeast corner of the loop. No major accidents or any delays to report so far this morning. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Johnny. It is the first day of school for students across the Kansas side of the metro. Today, all students return to Midland Adventist Academy in Shawnee. Sixth and ninth graders return in the Piper School District, and some students are headed back to school in the Turner District. And of course, the Turner School District has a message for parents and students as the fall semester gets underway. KNBC 9's Martin Augustine live near Junction Elementary this morning with that message. Martin, what's top of mind today? Well, a couple of things. First off, the district wants to remind students and parents who's coming to school today because it's a staggered start here at Junction Elementary and at all the schools across the Schooner, Turner School District. So for today, students in grade 1 through 7 and ninth grade, it's their first day of school today, but it'll be an early dismissal day with the Journey School of Choice also returning today for a full day. Tomorrow, kindergarten students through 6th grade return for an early dismissal day with grades 7 through 12 reporting for a full day. Friday's a full day from pre-K through 12th grade, although there's no school for the Journey School of Choice. Here's another heads up uh, from the district to parents here at Turner. That free meal program for all students that have been in place the last couple of years, that program ended in July. So if you think you qualify for free or reduced cost meals, you need to apply for that at the district's website or at the district office. Now, there's a comprehensive back to school list uh, checklist that Turner has put together. And if you see my Twitter handle there on the screen, I've got a link to all that on my Twitter page. Reporting live, Martin Augustine, KBC 9 News. Thanks, Martin. As we just heard, more students in the Turner School District will head back tomorrow. Piper will also be welcoming more grades in the morning. A number of other districts will be beginning school tomorrow, including Shawnee Mission, Olathe, Gardner Edgerton, and Valley Falls. In Missouri, the Independent School District is discussing the possibility of moving to a four day school week. That was on the agenda of last night's school board meeting. Nothing final yet, though. More than 100 districts all across Missouri now have a four day school week. The Lathrop R2 district, one of among the first to adopt a shortened week in 2010. The superintendent there says the goal was to save money back then, but now he's seen even more benefits. Uh, looking back, I know that those first couple of years, that certainly was a benefit. We, you know, got more people applying for our jobs and coming here than, than we had in prior years. Lathrop District added about an hour to each school day with more instructional time there. The district says the two challenges they are facing now include child care on that fifth day and making sure kids who get free and reduced lunches have a meal when they're not in school. 
You can count on KNBC 9 First News as more students head back to school this week. We will have live reports every morning as more and more schools open up. Plus, we'll bring you any information on changes in your local school districts like new security measures and altered bus routes. Look for all that on air and online at KNBC.com. Time now is 636 and this morning we're learning more about the FBI raid of President Trump's home in Florida, Mar-a-Lago. The Justice Department is staying silent even as Republicans continue to slam the search warrant. ABC's Ike Josh is in Washington with the latest. This morning we're learning more about the timeline surrounding Monday's search at former President Trump's Florida home. Sources tell ABC News the FBI gave the Secret Service members stationed at Mar-a-Lago 45 minutes notice. The Secret Service only alerted resort staff moments before FBI agents arrived. A staffer then alerted the former president's son Eric who then told his father. Trump issuing a new statement late Tuesday calling the search a horrible thing and a coordinated attack by Democrats. Several of Trump's allies rallying around him, attacking the FBI, which is run by a Trump appointee, with misguided accusations. The Department of Justice, led by Attorney General Merrick Garland, also drawing ire from Trump's supporters. It's hard to believe that it's not politically motivated. We need to hear from the Attorney General about this. Nobody's above the law, but the law needs to be above politics. Since the raid, neither the Justice Department or the FBI has made any comment. The White House press secretary says President Biden knew nothing about it. The president was not briefed, did not, was not aware of it, no. No one at the White House was given uh, a heads up, no, that did not happen. While the Justice Department has a policy of not commenting on ongoing investigations, Trump was given a copy of the warrant, which explains the reasons for the raid and could release it if he wants to. If you believe this is such an abuse, let us see the warrant and let us decide for ourselves. Monday wasn't the first time the FBI visited Mar-a-Lago about those documents. A small team was there last spring meeting with Trump's lawyers and reviewing the papers with the former president there. Well, like everything else, the sticker price for Ford's new electric truck is climbing. When they released news of the Ford F-150 Lightning, Ford promised a starting price of under $40,000. Now Ford is saying it's going to start at 47,000 and that's not including taxes, fees or upgrades. But if you order right now in the pre-sale, Ford is still promising to honor that lower price. Supply chain issues and semiconductor chip shortages, one reason behind the increasing cost of cars like the Lightning. Yesterday, the president signed the Chips Act, which allows some of those chips to be made here in America instead of overseas. Taiwan itself uh, is, you know, among the most impactful economic entities on planet Earth. I mean, it provides something like, you know, 70 to 90 percent of the most advanced semiconductors that everybody's iPhone and laptops and everything else uh, uh, runs on. The CHIPS Act invests more than $200 billion over the next five years to help America regain a top role in making semiconductors. 638 now on your Wednesday morning as uh, we wake up and kids go back to class. At least it's Pretty nice today. Yeah, yeah, what a great first day of school. Yeah, last day of summer for a lot of kids, last weekend of summer for a lot of students. In the next three days, nothing but sunshine. Mild mornings, you're going to start to notice a little bit more humidity during the afternoons. Today, 87 degrees with sunshine. Normal high this time of year is 88, so we're right around there for tomorrow as well. 89 degrees. Where you're going to notice that change is Friday. 91 degrees, but there's going to be some humidity that goes along with that. So that 91 is a little deceptive. I want you to see that number there or maybe even see that on the KNBC app and think, OK, typical. There's going to be a lot of humidity, so that heat index value will probably be 95 plus, and that's going to continue for this weekend. The highs are going to be in the mid 90s, but with the increased dew point, the humidity, if you will, it's going to feel a lot hotter than that. So we'll look for heat index values over the weekend, Jamie, to top 100 degrees, especially on Sunday. OK, good to know. Thanks, Nick. Want to turn down to your commitment 2022 coverage? We are now just under 90 days away from the general election on November 8th. Voters will head to the polls to choose from the candidates who won the primaries last week. So on Election Day, Missouri voters will get to decide if recreational marijuana should be legal in the show. Me yeah, state. they'll now be voting on a constitutional amendment to legalize it. Medical marijuana was legalized in Missouri the same way in 2018. Now supporters have collected more than 215,000 signatures to support legalizing recreational weed. It could bring around $40 million to the Show Me State every year. A local dispensary owner hopes it passes. There will be lines, but I don't think it will be what people saw in the news in the beginning. I'm not, I think it will be a long line, but manageable. The ballot question would also allow people with certain marijuana related nonviolent offenses to petition to be released from prison, parole or probation and have their records completely expunged. 
Missourians will not be voting on what's called the ranked choice voting in November. That plan would have put all names, Republican and Democratic, on a single ballot in the primary and then allow you to rank them. The top four candidates would then move on to the general election. Missouri Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft says backers didn't collect enough signatures to get that question onto the ballot. Remember, you can always count on KBC9 for your Commitment 2022 coverage as we get closer to the November general election. You can look for live reports and the latest updates on air and online at KMBC.com. Still to come this morning, a couple is looking for a new school for their daughter after they say she was dropped from her original school before the year even started. The reason they say the school gave them for kicking this kindergartner out. Whether you're wrapping up your school supply shopping or just getting started, you're probably looking for some ways to save. Coming up next on First News, we have the top tips from experts on how to get the most bang for your buck. Rain chances return just as students return to the school areas next week. I want to show you the most likely time for rain to impact any school plans. It's coming up. Count on us to help start your day with up to the minute information. You're watching KNBC 9 First News leading the way. Six forty-four on your Wednesday morning. Smooth sailing as students start to return to the classroom. Taking a live look across the metro, Nick is going to tell us when excessive heat and even rain could impact your back-to-school plans. For now, though, let's check on current road conditions with News Shopper Nights. Johnny Rollins. Good morning, John. Hey, Jamie. Good morning. We're looking good out here. Nothing to worry about as far as any major problems anywhere around town. Checking in on the run from Lee Summit on over to the 435 interchange via 470. And everything doing well here. Traffic going away from us. That westbound run looking great. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Johnny. We do have an update on a statewide Amber Alert. Two-year-old Amari Washington has been found safe. St. Louis County Police made the announcement on Twitter. Missouri State Highway Patrol issued that Amber Alert around 4.15 this morning, saying that Amari was alone in a car that had been stolen. Again, we can now report that she's been found and is okay. A couple in Louisiana is weighing their options after their five-year-old daughter was kicked out of kindergarten. And they say that she was dropped from school because they're in a same-sex marriage. Jennifer and Emily Elizabeth Parker took in Emily's niece Zoe after her dad was in an accident in 2020. They officially adopted her last week. She was enrolled in a private Bible school, but the Parkers say once word got around that her family situation had changed, she was kicked out of school before it ever started. And the pastor met us in the meeting room 
and started talking about gender identification and that they teach the words of the Lord and marriage is between a man and a woman and they didn't think this was a good fit. The school released a statement saying that they're quote committed to instruction and living in accordance with the teachings of scripture. As for the Parkers, they say other Christian schools have reached out and offered to let Emily in. Some people in Cass County are concerned about a property near the Katy Trail now. And we were there and we could hear it for ourselves when our crews pulled up. Just south of Pleasant Hill, Missouri, you can hear dozens of dogs barking and they're not all in one place. Some are chained up, some are loose, walking right up to our car. We met Michelle Brinketter, who says she's made several attempts to reach out to the property owner about his animals. If he needs help, let's get him help too. I just think these animals who cannot do it for themselves are depending on us to do it for them. Michelle is also concerned about the dog's health. One dog's ribs were exposed, another had an obvious limp. A spokesman for the Cass County Sheriff's Office confirms investigators are looking into recent complaints, but no decision has been made so far. Kansas City, Missouri Mayor Quentin Lucas hit the court last night for an annual tradition. He ditched the suit, but obviously kept the shirt and tie for the Mayor's Night Hoops event. It's one of four events every year that Kansas City kids have a safe option for a night out. The program has been around since the 1990s. The mayor says it's about a lot more than basketball. It's also a mentorship program. You know, I think the kids get to see a bunch of, uh, particularly women and men, but a lot of adults who are spending time with them, supporting them, let them know that there are a lot of different paths you can go, but we're here to support you. Mayor had a few guests you might recognize, nice, like a Mizzou and NBA star Kareem Rush, also former KU Jayhawk, Travis Relliford. The KC Prep Project is joining in on all the back to school fun. They're holding a back to school adoption special this weekend. Dogs 30 pounds or more are $30. All adult cats are just $25. The offer is good at the KC campus, Zona Rosa, and Petco locations. You can look at adoptable pets online and on the shelter's website. If you bought any school supplies this year, you know, they aren't cheap. With high inflation and supply chain shortages, your money just isn't stretching as far. ABC's Rena Roy has some tips on how you can save on your back to school shopping. Backpacks, notebooks, pencils, the back-to-school shopping list can really add up at the cash register. But with inflation prices and many stores still facing production issues, Consumer Reports Deals editor Samantha Gordon says there are still back-to-school deals to be had. We are still seeing some of those residual disruptions that are impacting shipping times and inventory levels, but you can still find savings. Gordon says you should plan ahead, create a budget, and compare prices online before you shop. Just knowing what your options are allows you to make much smarter purchasing decisions. Spread out your shopping by checking stores that aren't major retailers. When it comes to a budget, choosing the right stores based on how much you'll be able to save can really make a big difference. And don't discredit places like office supply stores and wholesalers. If you're in the market for electronics, consider buying refurbished products. Look for a certified used model from a reputable seller. That can be a great way to get a good chunk of savings and the product should function just as well as something that's brand new out of the box. And after you've made all your back to school purchases, keep an eye out for sales. If you see a price drop, you may be able to get a partial refund. You just have to reach out to customer service and ask them. You usually have a two week window if they have a policy in place. And if they don't, they might be able to work with you or you might just be able to return that product and buy it again for that sale price. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Happening today, volunteers will be stuffing backpacks with supplies all for kids in the Jackson County CASA program. Those supplies were collected last month and will now go out to hundreds of kids. Last year, Jackson County CASA gave backpacks to 264 children in need. We want to see your kids' first back-to-school pictures. We'll be sharing them over our air over the next few days and next few weeks. Just tag KNBC in your pictures on social media. You can also email them to us, news at KNBC.com. Be sure to tune in to First News every morning to catch your kids' picture on air. The Kansas City Royals are in the Windy City for a series with the White Sox. The Windy City team actually visited Kansas City. Got started off with a bang thanks to one of the young Royals. There's a drive down the right field line into the corner and it is gone. Vinny Pasquintino blasting a home run in the third inning. I actually heard that on the radio when I was picking the kid up from school. We were both so excited, we decided to get to the ballpark for part of that doubleheader. Nick Prado would add another home run in the sixth, and the Royals go on to win this one 4-2. to two.
In the night game, Pasquantino belted another homer, becoming the 13th player in franchise history to hit a home run in both games of a doubleheader. But the power from Pasquantino wasn't enough in the second game as the Royals' winning streak comes to an end and they lose 3-2. to two. So the Royals and White Sox continue their series here at home today. Chris Bubich will be on the mound for the boys in blue. Former Royal Johnny Cueto will be on the mound for the White Sox. First pitch set for 7-10 tonight. And sounds like it's going to be a beautiful oh, night so for nice. a game. Oh. I just have loved how nice it's been going outside. We got mm -hmm. a new dog and it's been great the last two days letting her out because... It's been really nice. Yeah, you're great in the morning. You're great in the evening. I mean, it just looks wonderful. I'm yeah, well, you know, especially there. after we came through that, you know, 100 plus degree day yeah. the other oh day, you know, goodness. anything's beautiful. It's just so hot. And you know what? Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, if you still like summer, uh, we have that again for this weekend. It's going to be hot and humid again. So for those of you that are just trying to hang on to one last weekend of summer, any of those going back to school next week, their last summer weekend, uh, we've got that on the way. We also have rain chances on the way because we still have drought and we need that rain in spots. 64 degrees, the sun is up, the temperatures are still holding in the 50s and 60s. They'll warm into the 70s here in the next couple hours. 59 in Warrensburg, 56 in St. Joan to Atchison, 65 in Olathe to KCK and Piper, 64 downtown and 66 in Liberty. 12 hour forecast for today in Kansas City. Just wall to wall sunshine, start to finish. 87 degrees this afternoon uh, around noon. We'll call it 80 for recess and high temperatures in the mid to upper 80s. There's going to be a few 90s on here as well. Lawrence, Ottawa up to Atchison about 90 degrees, 85 in Odessa, 86 degrees in Warrensburg. We'll continue that warming trend tomorrow. You know, each day is just getting warmer, uh, not quickly, but gradually 90 in St. Joseph and Leavenworth near 90 in Kansas City, 88 degrees in Odessa, Oak Grove, Grain Valley into Marshall. The weekend hot and humid. We'll have a heat index values Saturday, possibly up around 100. Sunday, the heat index value will be above 100 degrees, and that might even spill over into Monday. So there may be excessive heat to deal with for after school activities or practices. There's also the chance of rain showers, a few thunderstorms possible next Tuesday and Wednesday, and that should cool our temperatures off into the 80s during the afternoon. It's 6:53.
This morning, we are learning more about the FBI raid on former President Donald Trump's Florida resort of Mar-a-Lago. Sources say they were after papers Trump took from the White House, but it wasn't the first time they visited his home. Good Morning America will have the details on that first meeting about those classified documents. GMA is next right here on Channel 9. And here at home, it's the first day of school for hundreds of kids on the Kansas side of the metro. When First News continues next on KCWE, we're live in KCK with what officials in the Turner District want parents and students to know. And we're heading back to school with a lot of sunshine, mild conditions this morning into this afternoon. Typical summer heat, 87 degrees, sunny for Thursday and Friday. You're going to notice those temperatures start to creep up into the 90s by Friday. And then here we go, full send heat this weekend. Saturday and Sunday highs in the mid 90s. Heat index values are going to be up around 100 degrees. That may spill over into Monday. There will be a cool front coming in next week. There's still some uncertainty as does it get here Monday, does it get here Tuesday. When it does, you're going to notice some relief from that excessive heat and even the chance of rain and thunderstorms, which we still desperately need that rain, especially uh, for our Missouri communities. Yeah, and of course, watching very close on all the first day of schools because about every day from now for the next like three weeks, kids There's are going back to school. Yeah. yeah, so a lot of eyes uh -huh. on the forecast. We'll have much more of that forecast when First News continues over on KCWE GMA is next here on Channel 9. I hope you all have a great day and have a great first day for the kids going back. Leading the